Now, we've got to make sure we don't stop paying attention to those protests in Iran. The regime says it's executed a prisoner convicted for a crime allegedly committed during the uprising. Here's the latest from Sky News UK. In Corvée, residents silently march through the town. The police watch from the side, while shops and businesses throughout the country have shut their doors. The authorities accuse their opponents of waging a war against God. The first protester from this popular rebellion has been hanged. Mohsen Shikari was arrested in September, then sentenced to death for injuring a security guard. The Iranian judiciary produced a slick video where Shikari confesses to his so-called crime. The message here is clear. Dissent is punishable by death. Another 21 protesters faced the death penalty, it's thought. The protests in Iran were triggered by the death of a 22-year-old called Masa Amini. She died in police custody after she was arrested for wearing her hijab incorrectly. Terrible, isn't it? Let's bring in Naz Almasi from the Iranian Women's Association. Naz fled Iran with her father and sister in 2013. In 2010, she was arrested and jailed while demonstrating with her mother. She joins me now from the Sydney CBD. Thanks for talking to us, Naz. Uh, this execution uh, of a male protester seems to step up the threat to Iranians even further, and it's probably a very clear message from this brutal regime as well. Thanks for having me today. Uh, yes, uh, this was a brutal execution by the regime, and it's just a sign that the regime has took another uh, step to further their violations against human rights. And it's very important to know that it wasn't just Mohsen Shikari. Mohsen Shikari was one of the first protesters being um, executed publicly, uh, but there are multiple more on the uh, death row and who are waiting to be executed which is very important to be their... Uh, which makes it very important for us to be their voice. Well, it is just so frightening and you've got to sort of stop and check when you live in the, you know, the, the wonderful freedom that we do. We, we know hundreds of people have died during the protest, violence and, and, uh, and, and um, uh, visited upon them by the authorities during the protest. And as you su suggest, others would have been killed, we suspect. Others are on death row. But the idea that you had publicly announced that you would hang to death uh, a, a young man uh, for those rather mild crimes, I would suggest, is just chilling and goes to uh, suggestions about how, how hard-line the regime is and, and it must be very, very ominous uh, when it comes to what they're going to do next. Yeah, exactly. Um, Mohsen Shikari was actually one of the protesters and he didn't do anything wrong. He was forced to confess. Uh, he was tortured and he didn't have a lawyer, he didn't have a fair trial, which is unfortunately the case with many others in the prison. And uh, let me just say that we are very privileged in this country, Australia, but um, many countries such as my home, home country, Iran, don't have the privilege we have here. So people who have been protesting peacefully in Iran, asking for the basic fundamental human rights, such as being able to choose what they wear, being able to choose what they want to do, being able to um, uh, being able to work and study what they want to do, uh, is just considered a crime. So um, it is scary, it is frightening for me and many of my floor friends in Australia who well, have a link or any connection to our hometown. Yeah, we've got to keep international attention on this and congratulations to you for doing that from Australia. Tell us though about your own ex experience, your own perspective. Obviously, you will have grown up post the revolution, you wouldn't have known what Iran was like before the revolution, but presumably even growing up in Iran, you would have heard about that from your parents and other relatives. But tell us about how this uh, wonderful, diverse, uh, um, sophisticated country has changed over those decades. 
Um, well, um, I, as you said, I'm not uh, that old to know or to remember um, what happened before the revolution. Uh, the only thing I know is uh, people uh, rose uh, to ask for democracy, but unfortunately the revolution was stolen by mullahs, and they've been in power for 43 years now. Um, they've been using Islam a, a religion to control people. So even though it's called Islam, Islamic Republic of Iran, but they're not practicing Islam, actually. Islam is just a tool for them to control people, um, same as morality police and uh, other organizations and other uh, reasons they use. Um, there are so many things I can tell you which I don't think uh, I can put in a, such a short uh, uh, time, but uh, Long story short, uh, my people's basic human rights are being violated. It's a crime to be a part of LGBTQI community. You can get executed to death if you are gay. It's a crime to have any type of relation with uh, someone you're not married to. It's a crime to choose what you want to wear. We, we see women taking their headscarves off. That's not a protest against religion. That's just a protest against the whole regime of Iran because they've been using hijab and Islam as a um, way to control people. Yes, uh, it's been about 15, 16 years since I've, I was in Iran, but uh, wonderful people, but uh, that oppression was evident everywhere. It's inspiring to see people fighting back now, especially led by women, but the consequences for so many so far have been dire, and thanks for drawing attention to, to it for us today, Naz. Thank you for having me. Naz Almasi there, she's with the Iranian Women's Association. As you heard, she's found freedom in this country but is still trying to fight for uh, her fellow Iranians back home.